What I find out frequently is that surgeons do what they're trained to do. So we're very, very focused on finding the source of the pain. And from 1986 to about 1990, even the physiatrists I work with, as well as the surgeons, were just absolutely focused on finding the source, doing the surgery, getting rid of the pain. In fact, from 1986 until 1991, the state of, Washington, state of Washington had nine times the rate of spine fusions for back pain as any place else in the entire country. So I was part of that whole juggernaut. I was part of that initial zeal that we had new instrumentation, we had a way of putting screws into the spine that more reliably obtained a fusion, and we really, really thought we had this solved. I mean, we really thought we had it solved. So it wasn't until 1993 when I saw that my patients weren't doing as well as I thought they should, then I would do the perfect operation and they still wouldn't do well. Then I started, started seeing spines break down badly above and below the fusions. That's when I stopped. And in 1993, a friend of mine, Gary Franklin, is the medical director of workers' comp in the state of Washington. He published a paper in 1993 that showed that the return of work rate one year after a spine fusion for back pain was 15%. Two years after a fusion is 22%. So at that point, I looked at my results, I looked at those results, and I realized that this did not make any sense. Plus, these spines are breaking down. Those are huge problems. How did this make you feel? Well, a little lost at the time. You go, what do you do? So the surgery isn't working, other things aren't working, but I just realized that no matter what happened, that to put people through this big of an operation with that kind of success rate didn't make any sense. And so what I had the impression of before I saw that paper, that the success rate was around 70, 80, 90%. I mean, what would you want for a success rate? If you came to me with back pain, and it's a major spine fusion, what would you want as a success rate for that surgery to work? 75, give me 75. Okay, so when you look at the classic paper done in 2001 out of Scandinavia, they published a paper that showed that the success rate for a spine fusion, initially for the first six months, wasn't bad. Maybe 50% 50 of people get better, but by two years, only 24% of people had significant improvement in their pain and function. And what they're defining as, quote, a success actually was not pain-free. So you do, you're doing this definitive operation, and when you say when you say 75%, I'm assuming you're meaning pain-free, correct? You're not talking about getting rid of half your pain. So you're looking at a 25% chance of getting rid of enough pain that you thought it was worthwhile. Placebo effect's about 30%. So you look at other studies that are observational studies, there's not very good follow-up, the other paper that really, really changed my mind is there is a physician out of Stanford who's one of the most thoughtful orthopedic surgeons we've ever seen as far as doing very carefully designed prospective studies. Prospective meaning we're looking forward in designing the study and then enrolling patients. So he took a group of 32 patients with just back pain and they did a test called a discogram where they put dye into the disc and if, this, if that disc was painful, then that was considered a, a type of person who would benefit from a fusion. So he limited, it, he limited it to one level fusions, very, very carefully selected patients. The rest of the spine was basically normal, not a, not a lot of other stress factors. Then he compared those to a group of patients who had an unstable spine, which means they had a bony defect in the back part of their spine called a spondylolisthesis. And when they flex forward and flex backwards, there was about four to five millimeters of translation, which is pretty unstable. So we had about 30 patients in both of those groups. It was a five-year study, had a minimum of two-year follow-up. And what he found out that the people that had the unstable spines had about a 75% success rate, which is pretty good. It was still surprising to me because if, if you have an unstable spine, to me that should be 100% success rate. So that was a little perplexing to me then what do you think the success rate was in the patients who had just back pain, a degenerated disc, a positive discogram, which is considered one of the tests that we do for back pain, what do you think the success rate was in that group? 50. 27%. So this is the best group of patients 
one level disease. And the study's been criticized for being relatively small, but the methodology is just impeccable. It's just a beautifully designed study. So if this test is supposed to predict an outcome in a very carefully inspected patient, it should work at least 80, 90% of the time. It, it, it again didn't even reach placebo. Yet right now, there's between four to 500,000 fusions a year being done for back pain. It's a 10 to 15 billion dollar a year industry.